Welcome back to LMN's Budgeting for Snow and Ice Contractors. In this video, we're going to take a look at building your overhead budget. A lot of contractors get hung up here because splitting overhead isn't necessarily intuitive. But if you have good overhead spending totals, we'll show you a method that in 10 or 15 minutes, you can create an overhead budget that's really accurate and it'll also help you budget for your other division's overheads as well. Now, a lot of contractors get hung up on how to split overhead across divisions. Most give up, don't even try. But for those who do try, the vast majority take the sales approach, which is I split overhead by a percentage of sales for each division. Now, while this is tempting because it's easy, we'd argue that not only is it not accurate, it could actually hurt a contractor. If you split overhead by sales, chances are you're hiding divisions that aren't very profitable and making profitable divisions look less profitable than they are by splitting overhead purely by sales. If that's the way you're going to split overhead, it's not even really worth having a budget for each division. Whatever percentage of sales that division generates, that's the percentage of overhead it's going to have to recover. It's simple. It's not really accurate at all, though. For instance, if snow did 20% of my revenue, but I wanted to split my overhead rent, which is a huge expense when it comes to overhead, it rarely makes sense that snow should only be 20% of rent. If my snow season is four months long out of 12 months, you'd think rent should be split sort of about 33% or one third of the season to recover the appropriate amount for snow. If I was to follow my buy the sales approach and only do 20%, I'd be allocating a lot less of my rent to snow and maybe making snow look more profitable than it actually is. Another common approach is by month, where companies look at their overhead spending by month and in the months of snow, they allocate all that spending to snow's overhead, which it could be in some things like rent closer, but some things like advertising that you would probably pay months before may go into the wrong division really easily and again, not give you a very accurate overhead budget. The truth is that your overhead spending for each different type of expense probably varies and a one size rule never fits all. For example, let's look at something like rent. Rent is probably best applied as a factor of time. If snow is four out of 12 months of the year, then I'm gonna put one third of my rent to snow because snow is one third of my season. If I had a landscape designer who didn't work in snow at all and only did landscape design, then it doesn't make any sense to put any of their salary to snow. I'll leave it all in my summer divisions. Now, something like GPS or liability insurance, there's a good case to be made that you wouldn't carry those at all, or at least carry as much of them in the case of liability insurance as you would if you didn't do snow. And therefore you can load those expenses up in your snow budget because the only reason you have such high expenses is because of your snow services. Now, taking this approach to budget may seem like a little guesswork or a little bit of intuition or gut instinct, but in fact, it's probably the most accurate system you're going to get for splitting overhead because it looks at each expense individually and allocates to your best guess or knowledge the right amount of overhead per division. Now, to set this up, what I do is set up just a simple Excel spreadsheet. On the left-hand side, I've entered all my overhead expense categories from my company budget. And here, right beside it, I've entered my total company budget for each overhead expense. Now I've added another column that says Snow's division share. And all I've done here is gone down one by one through each expense category and decided how much was fair to allocate to the Snow division. For instance, advertising, maybe we didn't do a lot of advertising for Snow. So I only pick 20% of our advertising budget to go to my snow budget. On the other hand, something like bonding, I've loaded heavily into my snow budget because maybe we wouldn't even do bonding if we didn't need it for snow contracts. I've done the same with GPS down here. I put largely most of my GPS to my snow budget in the, with the argument that I wouldn't really need it if I didn't do snow. Other expenses like parking fines and penalties and landscape designer, I've ratcheted those expenses way down for my snow overhead budget so that snow doesn't cover more expenses than it needs to for those expenses that barely contribute to snow. Now on the flip side, when I build my summer budgets, either a maintenance or a maintenance and an independent construction budget, I have to make sure that these percentages, when I add all my budgets together, equal 100%. So if I'm gonna put 80% here of GPS, then that means in my summer budgets, 
I only need to allocate the remaining 20%. But on something like bank charges, where I'm only putting 10% to snow, I have to make sure that my summer budgets equal 90% so that everything balances out in the end. So in, let's call it 10 to 20 minutes of putting the spreadsheet together, you could have a system that'll help you easily split snow each and every year and your other budgets. This spreadsheet here then feeds my LMN budget. What I've done here is add all those same overhead expenses in this column. The previous actually represents in this case what I'm budgeting for my entire company. And the forecast is what I'm budgeting for Snow's contribution of those expenses. So I end up with the same number, the total of my forecast, which in this case is 28,000 in expenses and 39,000 in wages, is gonna match whatever my spreadsheet came out with in the back. Here in my LMN budget, I've simply entered my expenses, my company totals, and Snow's divisions totals. Under the wages section, I've entered each one of my overhead wages with their total annual wage and then Snow's share. And then I've done the same for equipment. Overhead equipment, I can add owner's truck or loader in the yard or any other sort of overhead equipment I may have allocated to Snow and do the same there. Now there's a few important things to remember when you're building your Snow budget, especially for overhead. And that is, first of all, we have to make sure repairs and fuel are in there. Remember when we did our equipment budget, we said probably 75 to 80% of your fuel goes to equipment, but some 20 to 25 would probably go to your overhead vehicles and equipment. And so don't forget when you're building your snow overhead budget that you didn't put all of your fuel and repairs in your equipment budget. In fact, you likely backed it down to 20 or 25%, but it could have been different. You were given the choice of the percentage that made sense for you back when we did the equipment budget. So you need to add repair and fuel in overhead as well to cover the cost of gas and repairs for overhead trucks and equipment. Now you don't need to add things like labor burden and depreciation. Both those things often show up in a list of overhead expenses, but remember we've covered them elsewhere. Labor burden is covered up here. You can see here this 20%, which carried over from the labor burden I put in the field labor section, is going to make sure that for every dollar of payroll I enter here, LMN is going to budget 20 cents to cover workers' compensation, payroll tax, and unemployment insurance. Your labor burden could be different than 20%, and it will depend on states and countries that you work in. The other expense that you don't need to add is depreciation. Again, a common expense that shows up in your overhead budget, but depreciation is really just the purchase price of something minus the residual value of something over X number of years. And that's exactly what we did here when we built our equipment budget. When we did your equipment budget, we worked out that we'd spend X on a truck and we'd keep it for so many years and it was worth whatever it was worth at the end of its life. That there is your depreciation. So you've really factored for your depreciation already in your equipment budgets and in your overhead equipment budgets. If you have any questions about building an overhead budget for snow, be sure to contact us at support at goelmn.com and we'll get you the answers as quick as we can.